hi welcome to Bonita's kitchen and thank you for joining us what I'm going to be making today is a delicious corned beef casserole now this recipe today you can make it with two different types of corned beef you could make it with the corned beef in the can chop it up nice and fine or you could make it with your left leftover corned beef if you got some made this is one of Raymond's Again, favorite recipes. He's got a couple of them on there. We got corned beef cakes, of course. That's one of his uh, growing up meals that his mom used to make. And as well, corned beef ash. So maybe we might be able to get Raymond to talk <laughs> a little bit about that after. I, I wait till pretty well the end of it. And what I do then is do a sample test of your casserole. Okay. <laughs> Perfect, that thank you. Right. So if that interests you, stick around and let's get started. So what I'm using here today is the canned corned beef. And of course you can get this in your stores. Um, or most stores. It's got this trusty little key. Now I can open it with the key or I can open it with my old fashioned can opener that I got there. But because they provide this key for us, I think it's only right that I use it. So you just put it in through the little metal tag and then twist it to open it. If you haven't opened this can before. And of course after we open it like this. This is a jagged sharp end edges there and you don't want to get that anywhere near you. I'm going to take this out of the can and then I'm just going to dice this in to small pieces. So then after you take it out of the can, if you're using the canned uh, corned beef, just take it out of the can, chop it into small pieces. And the same goes for your leftover corned beef chop it into small pieces 340 gram can so probably equal I'm gonna say equal to two cups because that this looks like about two cups of, uh, of corned beef now let me tell you the rest of the ingredients we're going to be using in our corned beef casserole I'm going to be using a can of tomato soup and a uh, one can of broth or water and I'll talk about that in a moment. We're going to be using carrots, sliced carrots, peeled and sliced, sliced uh, potatoes and that's under this. Some onion. I'm going to tell you how much in under this uh, video. It'll be uh, a recipe will be there. A chunk of cabbage and we're going to shred that. And we're going to be using some onion powder, sea salt or regular table salt and some pepper. So now let's get started. So I'm going to shred this chunked cabbage. You can do it with your knife or you could use a grater and just make it in chunks like this or slices. I'll show you that. Or we could use the sliced uh, grater and just have longer slices like this or again use your knife. So I'm going to grate that off and that's a quarter of a cabbage. And as well use your sharp knife and just grate it like that. And so that's you, it. You more or less get a lot of options there. A lot of options because like you said you may have a nice sharp knife or you could have a grater or you just want to rough chop it. So that's all we need to do there, just a rough chop. So first we're going to toss in a layer of carrots. Now we're going to probably do two layers of this, of different, uh, uh, of different vegetables. And then we'll do a layer of the roughly chopped onions. Again, the recipe will be posted below. You can get it here on YouTube or on our website, www.bonitaskitchen.com. So that's all you need to do there with a layer of that shredded cabbage. And then, before I put the corned beef up next, I'm gonna do just a little seasoning in between of making the next layer and just a layer of that onion powder then take the chunks of 
corned beef, let it be the canned corned beef or your leftover corned beef. And just put about a quarter of it over the top of the cabbage. And then layer it with potatoes, sliced potatoes, but peel them, slice them. Raymond calls this into dollar fries. <laughs> <laughs> when they're deep fried, they're dollar fries, but just the, slice them like that and then do an equal amount of the layering of those over yeah. the top and of the And you get to remember, you can dollar fries, you can also pan fry them. You can pan fry them too, you know. yeah, but not in this, not in this not, no. recipe, no. <laughs> no. We don't want to, to confuse anyone about no. that. So that's how you do that. Now I'm going to repeat that by putting the carrots. I didn't put potatoes on the bottom, I put the carrots on the bottom and then continue layering again the next level. Like that. So what I usually do, of course, you previous videos you might have seen, that I like to prep and get things ready in advance. You know, working it uh, when it's all done is a lot better than if you're peeling everything and getting it going. So just uh, peel your vegetables, soak it in water, your potatoes and your carrot. Take some of that starch off your potatoes. I'm going to layer it again, same with the carrot, cabbage, we're going to be putting some onion. Doesn't matter if it's totally the same, just as long as you got the separate layers. So we put that onion over there, and now I'm going to top it with the corned beef. So now I'm gonna take the rest of that corned beef and put over the top. Again, seasoning between giving it an equal amount of pepper, salt, and the onion powder. And if you've got another seasoning that you enjoy using, for sure, you could use that as well. Um, this is a pretty simple meal. And years ago when they made uh, meals like this for big families, they uh, used lots of vegetables and made it that it was lots of leftovers. Now we're going to take our can of tomato soup, pour in to a bowl, and a can of uh, broth, you could use broth of choice, um, and, or a can of water, if, uh, if that works for you. Mix it around, get all of the tomato soup out of there, and that's pretty much the can rinser group, and we got a lot of us out there. Pour that into the tomato soup and mix that through. So just mix that broth into the tomato soup. Now I'm going to pour it over the top of the casserole. So then you're going to pour all of that tomato soup mixture over the top of your corned beef casserole. And that's all you need to do there. Just until it's all done. Now, if you got a lid that's oven safe, you can cover this with a lid. Or you, if you got a big, cash, a big roaster with a lid, you could use that. Now we can cook this both ways, or three ways actually, in the oven on a 350 degree heat for two hours. You could cook it in your slow cooker, put it on a low, start it off in the morning, go to work, come back, and it'll be ready. Or cook it in a roaster out on your barbecue and put the lid down and then let it cook. And you can just check it. But today, I'm cooking it in the oven because we got a, like, a nice day to put the oven on. And, but, and then I'm gonna cover it with a piece of foil wrap, snug, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's baked. Our corned beef casserole is baked. And oh my, just look at the steam coming out there. Oh, too smells too good. This smells too good and it's gonna be too good to eat. So let's show you what that looks like. Mm. 
look at this delicious corned beef casserole. And I know you're just waiting to make yours. You can see the shredded cabbage and the vegetables just falling apart. And if you did this in your slow cooker, it would be equally as delicious. And if you were outside having uh, a day on your deck, put it in your barbecue and let it roast out there. And now just look at all that juice. I got some homemade bread on the side there that we're gonna dip into that. And Raymond's mouth is <laughs> drooling over there. So that's I it. Can't wait. That's it, as good as it gets. Of course, I gotta pour up some tea and have with it. And, uh, and as well, I'm serving here today with mine, some homemade white bread. And I can't wait to have a taste of this delicious corned beef casserole. Mm. Just dip my bread in the juice. I can't wait. Delish. I can't wait for you guys to make this delicious corned beef casserole. And again, if you're using canned corned beef or your leftover corned beef, it doesn't matter. It's gonna be equally as delicious. And to make this recipe, I'm going to leave the link at the bottom. The recipe is going to be there telling you how much of each one you would need in this recipe. And you can find it as well on www.bonitaskitchen.com. And of course, uh, you can visit us on our Facebook page and as well here on YouTube. Now. Raymond said that he's mm. going to have a taste of this. This is the kind of meals his mom used to make years ago. And I don't know, he's not one for telling good, stories. No, but good old corned beef takes me back a lot of years. Not saying like I'm getting old or anything. No, but not at all. Yeah, no, just <laughs> good old days. Corned beef cakes and corned beef casserole. And I can see stuff. why. I can see why. Yeah. I got a fork here for you, Raymond. Okay, okay. Come in and get your taste. Yep. And as well, you guys, we don't want to take any more of your time. We know it's precious. We're going to thank you for joining us here today. Stay safe from our kitchen to yours. From myself, Raymond, and our team here at Bonita's Kitchen. And don't forget to join us again on Bonita's Kitchen. Get you a cup of tea. Oh, that sounds good. We share a lot of money. What we drop before? <laughs> um, <laughs>